Okay, we're going to have a look at queries in this particular video, and what we're looking at is the driving school table that we uh, were building in the last video. But what I've done now is I have completed all all of which we identified in the uh, default table in the data dictionary, brain addled, and uh, I've filled out mobile number and things like that, and I've let the system sort out the rest of it. So all that's been resolved, and in fact what I've also done is I've added a series of records. Uh, Mickey Mouse has got a full record sweep, uh, sweep, but the rest I've just simply added. This is called test data, by the way, and it really is essential uh, to use. It's basically, it cannot be real data. It shouldn't be people's names, actual people's names, because they're living, that's, that infringes the Data Protection Act and personal privacy. And therefore, it's good to have a list of names that you can make up. And, and I've just made up these ones. Obviously, I haven't made four of them up because they're derivatives of uh, famous characters. So what I've done is, is build this system up, and I've got these five. I've put those in and I've only put their names in just to show you what a query can do. But let's think about what we mean by query. The, uh, the statement query is short for question. So a table holds data. That's all it does. All it's designed to do is hold this. We shouldn't be viewing it this way. We really should simply be holding data in the table. A query allows us to ask a question of this system. Uh, I'm going to just close down that table. But a, qu a query allows us to ask a question about that table and therefore we can get other results from it. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just quickly explain something to you. Um, a database has got to be able to perform four functions to be a true database. That is, it needs to allow you to add new data. That's pretty damn obvious. If you can't add data to a table, then what's the point of that table? If you can't, it's never going to have anything new to it. It's a it's a dead table, and therefore should be should be got rid of. Same thing with a database. You must be able to edit the data that's on there, otherwise any errors can't be corrected or any changes to the existing data can't be uh, edited in and therefore the data again will become historically useless. Then we need to be able to view the data. Sometimes we just want to simply see the data that's in this database in some form or other, be it on a form or a report or something else. And last but not least, we need to be able to delete the data. We must be able to remove data that is invalid for its purpose. These have direct connections with queries. Queries allow us to do these things. It's not only queries that allow us to do this, but there are four queries that match this quite happily. The first one, the add query, is called an append query. We'll look at those much later on, but an append query is used to add data when you run a particular type of query. You don't generally need to do these because you can run an update in another way, but we'll have a look at this as we go through. The edit is called an update query. Clearly, append means to add on to the end, update means to make changes to, so update, edit. The view is called a select query, and therefore it selects data from the database. And the delete query has a really unusual name. It is the delete query. Wow. There is one other type of query that I need to mention because we'll be looking at it today, and that is the parameter query. And the parameter query is an update to the select or update or whatever else. But we're going to be using it in the select query. We're going to be looking at select query with a parameter. And the parameter means that we add something, a question that the question can ask us before we can go any further. But let's have a look at them so to make it much easier for us to understand what we're talking about. How do I create a query in Access? We'll very simply create query design. Don't use the query wizard. Query design. Let's get to grips with the system itself. I'm offered a list and all my tables will appear here, but I've only got one, so I'm simply going to go add and close. If I have more than one table, then I should list that, uh, and I can form relationships in here, but we're not worried about relationships at the moment. I just want to see how a basic query works. And all I'm going to do is pull this down to here. And all I'm doing is grabbing the fields I want. In this case, all I'm going to grab is first name and last name. It tells me which table they're from. I could have simply gone through selecting. Uh, that would have grabbed it from the table. But there they are. I'm not going to worry. So I've only got first name, last name. Let's run this query. And I can see that it's pulled those from the table. 
the query has questioned my table and it has gone off to find all the first names and all the last names. Now to be honest, there isn't much point in doing that because I could have got that from the table itself. I didn't need to get a query to pull that data out. I could have pulled it straight out of the table. So the question uh, that this beggars is why? Well, the first thing to answer that question is I'm going to save this. I'm going to call it QRY for query underscore learner. I'll just leave it there. Click on OK. Now I've got the query. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add a new field, but not one off the list. But I'm going to show you that you can do things with queries that you can't do inside the table. When we were to building our system, we atom uh, atomized these fields. This was originally name. I've split it into first name and last name. That means it's easy to search. I can search, search the first name. But it's not very friendly when it comes to using it on the form. I don't want to simply see Mickey or Mouse, but I want to see Mickey Mouse or Mouse, comma, Mickey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself the option of re de-atomizing these. I'm going to go to build. Now because I've saved it, these fields come here. If you can't see them, if query learner doesn't list anything or doesn't appear, it's because you haven't saved it. Save it and they'll appear here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Australia last name and it appears in my build window up here. So let's just check that again. All I've done is right clicked on the very top box, gone to build, and then there they are because I've saved it. These have been listed. Stra last name. I'm going to do what we call concatenation. Concatenation is using the ampersand side on your keyboard, Shift 7, and that says join. Join Stra last name to speech marks, comma, space, speech marks. What that's going to do is going to take extra last name, so any last name, and it's going to put a comma and a false, uh, sorry, a comma and a space straight after it. Then I'm going to concatenate that with extra first name. So this means join. Take last name and join it to a comma and a full, and a space, and then join it to the first name. Click on OK, and that comes up as expression. One extra one. I'm just going to change that to name because I'm allowed to make it useful. So I've done something with this. I've created a new expression. And what I can do is let's just save this. Let's run this query, and you can see what it's done. It's actually put the comma and the space there, and I've got the first, the surname, and then the first name. So I've actually got this to reatomize these into something I can use. I can still search or sort by this field. So if I do ascending, so do these. These follow suit. If I do descending, or if I remove the sort altogether, so it's all being sorted out. But this is a much more user-friendly way. I could use the query simply to select these. Now, that's all fair and good, but if I'm running that, I don't want to see these, so I can actually take the tick out of these two and run that. And that's that. That gives me all of this. So let's go back to the design. This is a query. I've got a table. I'm asking this table here. I'm telling it to give me the first names and the last names and then simply concatenate those together to form this name here, this, this set of records here. Now, what else can I do with this? Well, there are a number of little features that we can do here, but I wanted to show you what sits behind this. Some of something called SQL or SQL view. People will tell you it's called SQL, some people will call it SQL. But you can see why I call this the select query, because actually the command that sits behind this is select. And it's told them what to do. Select this from the database from this table I'll select this field and this field given it as name from and tells it which table we will get to know these commands much more clearly 
but we don't need to worry about that at this stage those square brackets aren't actually necessary they're to solve a problem that we're not using because we're not got spaces in our names so we can do this oops that does destroy it so I can actually make this tidy a little point because if I come to run that it's happy go back to design view we'll go back to SQL there's a damn good chance that Access would put them back in, but it hasn't. But that's the C, a select command. Don't worry if that doesn't make any sense to you. Do spend a little while looking at it. Have a think about it. But I want you to see the basic select command. Select this field. Select this field. Still do the concatenation. Give it a name. And tell. I'll tell you which table that all this data is going to come from. But let's have a look at something else I can do. Now I've lost my hidden fields here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the first name and last name back in. I'll keep those in so we can just see them. Under criteria, I'm going to put mouse. I'm going to run it. Now look what's happened. Because I've put mouse under criteria, it only lists those people whose last name is mouse. Interestingly enough, I can't just simply put M. People think that's going to have anyone with M in their name. But that's looking for anyone whose surname is M. But I can put a star next to the M inside the speech marks. So the speech marks, because this, as far as this is concerned, is something called a string. And that will work. Better way of probably showing that might be to change this to an O and then putting a star on the other side as well, which means finding so like star O star, anything with the letter O in it. And those come up because Troy's got an O in it, Jones has got an O in it, and Mouse has got an O in it, it pulls it up. So this star either side, so a star on the left means anything before this, and an O. The star after it means O with anything that comes after it, and the star either side means anything at all. I can also do this. I'm just going to get rid of that. I meant to put it here actually and put and I'm going to run this. So what I've said there, because I put them in the criteria box, I've actually said look for anyone whose first name is Mickey and whose last name is Mouse. So if I've got them under the criteria this is an and. But what, what happens if I don't use that box? Why are there all these other ones? Well, let me show you. I'm going to put mouse in there. Now what's happened? I haven't just got Mickey. I've got Minnie as well. Let's have a look. Because when I put this on the new line, it means all. So therefore, it's looking for anyone whose first name is Mickey or whose last name is Mouse. I can also use the same field in the criteria and I could introduce Duck and therefore Donald now, is, now appears on my list. So I can do multiple ORs all the way down here without any issue. But the trouble with this is what if I don't know what the customer wants to look for. They might not want to look for my mouse. They might decide they want to look for something else. Well, what if I simply put something like last name. I've used capitals and I've used the underscore. I have used capitals. I don't have to, but it's just something I've put into there. You actually don't have to have that in there, but it does cause you problems later on. So personally, I wouldn't bother and I'd use none score. I'm going to run this. Notice it's come up with last name here. And if I type in mouse, it searches for anyone with mouse. So what I've got here is a parameter, and here's our parameter queries. 
This is now a parameter. I'm asking a question, but I'm asking the user to give me the initial answer. Later on, we can connect this to a form. I can select someone from the form. I can click a button, and it will give me the results from this. So the last thing I need to do with this last name is see, aside from running that and being able to enter in full name, what I can't do, we're back to where we were originally. If I run that and try to enter M, it fails. It's looking for anyone with the surname M. So what I need to do is mixture of everything we've done today, like last name, concatenation, speech marks star speech marks so done our concatenation we've done our like we've done our star if i run that and now type in m there it is if i wish to i can obviously do a full search and i can actually do the star that side with a concatenation and therefore when i run this i can still put the o in and i'll get everyone that's a parameter query. So in that short time, let's just have a look at the SQL so we just can see what this has done to our SQL. And you can see why I haven't sat here telling you to type all this in, because the SQL has got much more complex. It's not that this is impossible to understand, it's certainly not, but there is a lot there to get your head around. And quite simply, I'm just tidying this up because that's how I, what I like to do. I'm, I, have no life um, and what I like to do is I like to look at these and let them sort this all out it's also added all these onto the front end again I don't need all this these are things that once you've got your head around what it's doing you know what the system needs and what it doesn't need so I can actually get rid of some of the things in here and I should still be able to run this put an O in and it still work but that is a query there's our query all nicely running in the system there's a parameter we now know how to do an AND parameter and an OR parameter we know how to do a simple SELECT query we've seen the SQL commands that's a really good piece of coverage I hope that's helped